If you want to capture video from an old camcorder or VCR, you can try using one of these inexpensive USB video capture devices. Or if you already have a setup for capturing video from HDMI, you can use one of these composite video to HDMI converters. And I have been able to get good quality results from these. They both sell for about $10 on Amazon, and that's a bargain. But the problem with these devices is there is no consistency. There are numerous different manufacturers of these making products that look similar on the outside but have different internal components and those frequently change over time. So I can buy one of these today and it works fine for me but then a year later you can buy the same thing and it can be either extremely unreliable or may not even work at all. There are alternative video digitization methods which don't require a computer at all, such as this Sony DVD recorder, which is extremely easy to use and produces excellent quality results. But I do realize that DVDs are starting to be considered an obsolete format, plus if the end goal is to get the footage onto your computer, it does seem like extra work to burn a DVD and then rip it in your computer. So I've been looking for a USB video capture device, which is just as simple as one of these inexpensive EasyCap devices, but is more trustworthy and dependable and comes with easy to use software. And that search led me to this USB video capture device by Elgato. It says capture analog video for your Mac, PC, iPad, and iPhone. And this sells for $87.99 on Amazon, which is quite a bit more expensive than these cheapo easy cap things. But hopefully for that high price, you get consistently good quality and dependability and easy to use software included. And I've also noticed several professional video conversion services using this exact device with its included software. So if it's good enough for the professionals, Let's see if it's good enough for you. Inside the box you get the device itself, some AV cables, and a SCART adapter, which will probably leave 99% of Americans wondering what the heck this thing is because we never used SCART here. Here's the device itself. It has composite video input, S-video input, and what will hopefully be stereo audio input. Because I know some of these capture devices have what look like separate left and right audio inputs, but they really just combine them together to mono. And on the other end is a USB plug. And now here is the Elgato video capture software running on my MacBook Pro. A Windows version is also available. And I have a video camera at the ready connected via both composite and S video. And it's switchable between 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios. So this will be a basic test of all the functions of the capture device. So this is my first test of the software. It has a time limit set to 60 minutes or you can choose any range from 10 minutes to 180 minutes or custom but I'll leave it 60 minutes for now. And there's the image from the camera. I'll move my hand in front of it to prove it's a live image. And it's selected composite I'll switch it to S video and that works as well we get a choice of 4x3 or 16x9 so if I change the camera to 16x9 now it looks correct at that aspect ratio but most analog video you're going to be capturing is 4x3 so that's what I'll go with for now and now it's showing the level from the camera's microphone the audio is not important for this first test, but at least it proves it works. I'll hit start recording, and this will be our first test of the video capture software. Now it gives us an option to trim the clip, but I'll just leave the whole thing in. And now, what do we want to do with it? We can play it with QuickTime, we can add it to iTunes or upload to YouTube. How about just saving it to a file? I guess I already saved it to a file. It's saying it's in the movies folder. It's an MPEG-4 file at 1500 kilobits per second, which is pretty low. 640 by 480 at 29.97 frames per second. And the audio is 128 kilobits, 48 kilohertz AAC, which is also rather low. 
Now the video is set to widescreen and to make sure the audio is coming through in stereo I have it connected directly to the output of this cassette player and I'll let the announcers on the tape tell you what you should be hearing. I am speaking from the left. My name is David. I am speaking from the right. My name is Mary. I am still on the left. This is a quick channel identification test. And I am still on the right. The resolution of the widescreen video it captured is still 640 by 480, which is rather strange, but it did at least flag the video as containing a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So most media player and video editor programs should properly display in widescreen, but some may not. And that's it. It's very simple software, so you don't get any choices of different resolutions or bit rates. Live camera feeds are all well and good, but the real test will be to see how it deals with analog videotape formats like VHS and Hi8. So let me give you some samples of that. These kids have it so much easier these days. Here we go. I had to walk to school in the snow 12 miles. Uphill, both ways. <sighs> My kids. Funny kids, don't you think? <laughs> one thing I have taught them to respect from day one is nature. We only ride where we're supposed to and never off the trail. Not only is it unsafe to ride on unfamiliar ground, it can also hurt the environment. If ATV riders don't stay on the trail, the ranger would end up prohibiting ATVs altogether. So, if we want to keep on riding out there, we have to respect the environment. If I couldn't ride an ATV, I'd have to get back up on that horse. And I don't want that. None of us want that. You may think that came out okay because that looks similar to many other VHS captures you've seen. But now I'll give you a direct comparison to how the DVD recorder captured it. We have to respect the environment. If I couldn't ride an ATV, I'd have to get back up on that horse. And I don't want that. None of us want that. Finding an activity we all liked was so important. We like the fact that this teaches our kids responsibility. Just don't tell them that. They think we're only out here for fun. You just have to ride safe and ride smart. I'd say that's a night and day difference. The image is much sharper and clearer. The motion is a lot smoother. And all of that annoying side-to-side -side wobbling in the image is gone. The only advantage of the Elgato is that it does not block you from capturing macrovision encoded video. Just take those old records off the, the image is a lot more stable when capturing from a source that has a built in time based corrector, such as this Hi8 camcorder, but it still has a lot of visible compression artifacts due to the video bitrate being too low. You can really see it in the dark parts of the image. You are on tape. <laughs> hey, cool. Say hi to everybody. Hello everybody. <laughs> from, uh, greetings from Bora Bora. Okay, everybody on your P's and Q's. Ooh, we're, we're, having, we're having video. I don't let the camera. Act natural. Act. <laughs> If that's natural, I don't know what uh, what to expect. Lounge area. Lots to do when you're not diving. And the Elgato software has just about the worst de-interlacing I've ever seen. During scenes that contain a lot of movement, it blends the fields together, causing motion blur, and when there's only a little movement, it does nothing, leaving visible interlacing artifacts in the image. 
and using the Elgato to capture video from a vintage video game console or computer is definitely out of the question. As you'll see in this clip, I tried capturing from my Tandy 1000. If you're sensitive to flashing images, you'll definitely want to look away until the music stops. Yikes! Okay, it's safe to watch again, and here's what it should look like as captured by my DVD recorder. At this point, I'm sure a lot of people will be telling me I should use OBS instead of Elgato's own video capture software, so that's exactly what I did. I installed it on my Core i5 Windows 10 PC, and I configured it according to Jim Leonard's excellent tutorial on how to set it up to capture VHS and other analog video sources at 60 frames per second, which I'll include a link to. And while that has drastically improved the video quality I'm getting from this device, it cannot solve the problem of the video jittering and wobbling when capturing from VHS and other analog videotape sources that do not have a time-based corrector. In fact, it actually looks worse because now we're seeing it in 60 frames per second. On October 13, 1884, Pope Leo XIII had just finished saying Mass, and while still in the presence of several cardinals and bishops, he fell into a deep ecstasy. Needless to say, I want to return this and get my $90 back, but instead I'm going to take one for the team and crack it open to show you what's inside. First I'll try prying it open at the seam. Oh, that wasn't too hard. It's coming apart, at least on one side. There we go. It says OTG 102, version 1.4, and it has the date of May 19th, 2021. And the one main chip which does everything is a Connexent CX23103. And it turns out that's exactly the same hardware as used in the Diamond Multimedia VC500, which you can get for less than half the price of the Elgato version. And to be fair, I contacted Elgato with my concerns and criticisms of this device, and they wrote back with what is probably just a boilerplate response, saying, We appreciate that there may be aspects of the product that could be improved or modernized, and we value your input in this regard. However, please understand that the nature of this particular product means that significant changes are not always feasible or in line with its intended use. We strive to balance the need for functionality and reliability with the desire for modern features and design, and in this case, the product's original design continues to best meet its purpose. So basically, they're not going to change it. So needless to say, I cannot recommend the Elgato USB video capture device because despite its high price and the ease of use of its included software, its video quality is not acceptable. And I'm not going to name any names, but those professional video conversion services that are using these Elgato video capture devices are doing a disservice to their customers by giving them such inferior quality results. And it may actually be to blame for a lot of the problems they've been experiencing in transferring VHS tapes. Except if it's a tape caked in mold like this one. Beautiful barbecue. We had grilled tuna last night. It was delicious. Oh! <laughs> and then the nephew just made me shit my pants. <laughs> Let the beef that audio out. 